European Nationals is behind us, and with that, we all have a renewed vigor for some NAMI content. I'm coming at you with some OPL5 gameplay against Rebecca, a control deck that generally is a good matchup for NAMI just because the leader can't attack. It's that much less pressure that they provide on you. But especially in the mid to late game, they can actually deploy some really powerful threats. If you don't have the tools that you need, it can get away from you pretty dang quickly. I hope you enjoy the games. We're playing at Sunny Hobbies here in Toronto, Ontario. And if you want to see the custom Dawn that I have, you can check that out in a pinned comment in the video and as well in the description down below. Enjoy the games. We are starting things off after a mulligan. We keep the hand that we have and uh, well, you know, we're, we're just kind of messing things around. Our opponent is on the first play here. So they're gonna kind of activate their Rebecca ability. They whiff on that. I go to two Dawn and draw. And honestly, my hand isn't that bad. I, I will say that the two impels off the start is kind of unfortunate, but I know that this hand is honestly good because of the fact that this deck will not apply that much pressure to me. It's going to be perfectly okay. I think the Sanji's Pilaf that I have in hand is going to be able to draw me into a lot more. So I think I'll be fine. They activate leader ability, get the one cost into their hand. They're at three Dawn here. They're going to play it out and they're going to activate it on their turn. They're looking for more threats. Now, this is it's been a while since I played against uh, Rebecca in general. So I read the Mansberry. Uh, they're going to be able to tutor through. You see the back of my head there, my big old head. Regardless here, uh, you know, they're going to return the Rebecca to their hand, which is honestly going to be a good threat, a good way for them to flood out the board. I'm going to play three Dawn, go peel off, draw into an overheat and another peel off, which isn't great. Uh, I really hope that they don't, you know, put uh, attach a bunch of Dawn on the Mansbury and start attacking, but I'm going to thin out my deck. I can take this opportunity, just put a Mr. One into my hand. And really, I'm like, okay, I don't think they'll attach five Dawn and hit me with the one cost. I don't think that's going to happen. So I think I'm safe to just tap out and keep doing this, be aggressive, thin out my deck. There isn't going to be a lot of control or bottom decking happening from this deck. Okay, it will happen, honestly, but I think it's perfectly fine to be aggressive in that sense and use those buggies to grab whatever we can. Even if it's impel downs, use those impel downs to thin out my hand because ultimately I can cast them to do that. Anyway, they play the event. So now that they're now their kind of characters can attack with a pseudo rush they have to be a certain type but that is uh, a concern of mine they play three cost five and that five is going to be uh, KOing my buggy which is great it's not gonna you know kind of down cost anything which is nice and uh, they're gonna kind of activate that leader ability they find themselves a good piece of removal I'm gonna untap on my turn go to six dawn and I see you know the three cost actually gonna be a pretty good hard to bounce. It's just how I want to do this. I'm going to use a Zeph because that provides a little bit of pressure. So the Zeph is going to bounce that to their hand. And you'll notice, honestly, in general, uh, the player I'm playing against is relatively newer to the OPTCG. They've been a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And so that's why they're on the Rebecca list. Uh, a bit more of a control deck requires a lot of thought, good kind of high skill ceiling type of strategy. But regardless, they don't know the Nami matchup. So you're going to see some slower plays, maybe a, a misplay here and there, but it's all in good fun. I, I give them all the tips at the end of the game as to how to approach the Nami matchup, which actually matters for them in the round after, but that's not for this video. Regardless here, they play out their, um, they play out their other three cost again. They get rid of my Zeph on, uh, on their turn. And uh, honestly, I'm going to keep bouncing that. If that's going to be their only threat, I, I'm going to draw two cards first. I see that I have another Zeph. And uh, instead of kind of uh, keeping myself tapped out here, what I'm going to do here is bounce that three cost and then keep up the interaction that I have. Now I do have the buggy to play, which I ultimately will because thinning your deck is important. Find myself a, another impel down. I don't want the Mr. One in this case. I get myself the third impel down simply because um, and I let them read the bounce card, but simply because I have the other impel downs in my hand, I can use one impel to discard the other ones. So that, that's a way to empty that hand completely, get rid of these dead cards. Of course, if I draw like a gum gum gabble, then I'm gonna be able to mill those out. Anyway, they KO my buggy as well. I mean, that's just what's gonna happen if I keep bouncing that, but that's fine. That means that they have no threats coming at me. And in this case, really what I'm looking out for is this Rebe Rebecca's going to bring out a Hina, but I'm looking out for, you know, that Sabo that's going to get returned to hand, maybe a Luchi, maybe, uh, you know, seven cost Luffy as well. Those are the type of threats that I'm looking for. And on the top end, honestly, like a Kuzan or two, honestly, the board can get pretty dang out of control. So I separate their board a little bit just for my own, you know, kind of uh, tracking purposes to play another one cost there. And at this point, 
kind of looking through the deck, finding another Sabo, and I'm and I'm thinking, okay, so I'm not actually that far through my deck. I've been milling out a little bit, but if they start swinging at me with like a wide board, it's going to go kind of crazy. So I read the Kairos just in case if anything happens here. And uh, what they do is uh, they're kind of looking through the deck here, looking for cards to return. They return the Luchi with that ability. I find myself a Kaya, which is going to be pretty good. Play the Kaya, draw two, discard two of the Impel Downs. Then what I'm going to do is uh, tap five Dawn here play out my Zeph, right? And I'm thinking, do I bounce my Kaya? Do I bounce the three cost? What's the most value to me? I take the Zeph, and ultimately what I do is I bounce the Kaya. I'm like, all right, look, if they're going to start playing out threats, right? I'm going to mill both of those cards that they put away. If, if I'm going to start playing out threats, right? Ultimately speaking, they're going to play out like their Sabos. They're going to play their high-end stuff. So I need to keep like, I need to keep drawing through my deck so that when I start casting my Gavels, when I start casting my Deathwings, then it's going to, you know, make it so that I, I'm actually a certain ways through my deck. They play the Kuzan KO my Zeph, which is a little unfortunate. It's been a while since I've played against Kuzan, but hey, threats are good. They're going to swing 5k. I'm going to go uh, Overheat, bounce the Hina to their hand, and this is why I've been playing Overheat. Overheat's clutch! right it's really good like overheat you can even do like crazy things like overheat bounce your kaya and it's like a build your own death wing you just don't get to draw anyway so i kaya here and i'm kind of looking through my deck i drop an impel down and at this point thinking what do i do i think i draw drop a death wing here because i have another death wing in hand i'm going to use two dawn nojiko is going to bounce the three cost again that <laughs> they are just really frustrated at this point in terms of how much bouncing i'm doing impel down is going to grab the gavel as well and then i can start thinning out the deck even more no swings at all here because i know that ultimately if they start playing out stuff like seven cost luffy they're going to counter out cards from their hand a not being able to use their rebecca ability i play another kaya but not being able to use their rebecca ability but then also feeding their graveyard so that they can re-stand uh luffy is actually really important for them as well so i don't want to do that let them do that on their own so i don't want to swing this is not a matchup where I need to do that unless it is with Zeph. And if I swing with Zeph, I swing big. So in this case, play the control game. I'm managing to find my Kai's. If you look at the deck right there, it, it, it's kind of way less than half at this point. So I'm going to start KOing some stuff. I let them know here that I give them the tip. I just kind of feel really bad. I'm like, look, honestly, look, kill the Kaya, right? I, I kind of feel bad for my opponent here. They just don't have like the right matchup knowledge. And I'm like, look, kill the Kaya, kill the things that you can bounce. Leave the Mr. One, but ultimately you can decide to keep the Mr. One or not. And I'm like, all right, okay, there you go. So they kill the Kaya. So giving them that little tip there, just being a little bit more helpful. Now, Mon uh, Luffy comes down, and I'm just trying to uh, like, like remember all the conditions here because that can attack now thanks to the event. So Luffy is going to attack, and uh, it's going to go at a uh, lead here. And I'm going to decide like. Oh, sorry, it's going to go at Kaya, not lead. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I, I, I'm not going to bother protecting you. That's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overheat, and then I'm going to, uh, they're going to swing again with the Kuzan. I'm going to bounce the three-cost card. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to kind of mill over one card there with the rubber band. And then at that point, I'm going to pass the turn. They're going to pass the turn, I mean. And my hand is looking really good. Two gavels, no Jiko. I'm going to be milling over some cards. This, this game is essentially wrapped up. I'm going to pass the turn with double gavel into deathwing that's six cards that's six cards i mean i'm gonna mellow that's seven cards that i'm gonna be able to go through on this turn it's just this is exactly why the rebecca matchup is an absolute night or sorry absolute uh, uh amazing matchup for us the nami matchup is uh an insane one for the Re rebecca player but i will say they have the sabos they have those out and this is where the board starts getting a little crazy if i didn't have these gavels with me if i didn't have deathwings if i only had spotters and rubber bands it's going to spell some disaster so we're, we are going to gavel first to empty out the hand mill over two cards and then now the uh the kind of um love love mellow is going to be enabled so we're going to hit them with the mellow first draw a card since i'm at three or less and then hit them with the gavel pitch buggy and then mill over two more cards now the next swing that hits me unfortunately i mill over asandi's peel off the next swing that hits me is going to uh kind of draw me two cards with the death wing but they don't swing i go to i draw spot and pass i'm like all right that's fine i'm still at five life i could honestly take all five hits they'd probably trigger me into a billion different things at this point and i'd be sitting pretty at this point just look at the amount of cards left i have with the top loaders you can probably count like they're like seven or less eight or less or something like that another luffy comes down with kind of pseudo rush but they're gonna start swinging i'm gonna be fine here i'm gonna spot a 
uh, the kind of 6k attack here, see how I want to draw this out. I'm definitely going to want to draw the mellow here. And the way I want to do this is mellow and then not use the Kaya. So they're going to swing 8k uh, or 7k, I should say. So I'm going to Deathwing, draw two cards. And just explain that I draw two if I have no cards in hand. And then at that point, they're going to swing 9k. I'm going to redraw with mellow, give it nine draw draw and then counter out with the mr one to 10k then they're going to swing kuzan i take the kuzan hit death wink i think is more powerful in my hand i'm not going to use it on the luffy let them swing again at me i do not care because that kaya is going to be crucial to me winning this game so they're going to swing at nojiko which was really weird i think they should have just swung lead there but regardless we're going to kaya we're going to draw two and then we have five cards left in deck that's exactly how we're going to count this out i'm going to mill over um i'm just trying to think about how i want to do this right because my triggers could be really bad um so i'm thinking just should i mill two with the rubber bands or should i kind of set up my draws with a spot up i ultimately decide on the milling i think i need to go a little bit deeper i have four triggers left the triggers could end up being really bad i could probably guess what the triggers are but i don't want to play that game just yet but I think we can get there. Five cards left. We can essentially get to uh, the bottom two and uh, or like the bottom four because we're going to draw like uh, cards number uh, four and three here. So rubber band mills over one to the Zeph, which is great. It's not a card I want to draw. I'm then going to Deathwing and uh, the, the kind of swing there. And then that's pretty much the game right there. Two cards left. I have the gavel kind of gavel pits the mellow two cards get milled over and that's the game that's ggs thank you everyone for watching let me know if you want to see more paper gameplay and uh, more games at locals